1882 is a quick playing derivative of 1830, so many of the rules are the same. The game is set in Western Canada. Players represent investors buying shares and running public railroad companies to generate revenue. The richest player wins. It is for two to six players and with experience will play in two to three hours. It has been recently published by All Aboard Games and an online version can be played for free at 18xx.games. Eighteen eighty two setup. Lay the map and the stock market in the center of the table. Place the share certificates on the appropriate area on the board. Shares should be placed with the president's certificate on top. Shuffle and randomly select one of the extra trains. Place the Northwest Rebellion card in the train stack under the first train of the type randomly selected. Then stack the trains on the board. The rule book seems to indicate that there is a special place for them. We just put them over the bank information. Take one 10% share of each of these companies. Shuffle and randomly choose one and put it with the P4 private. Here you can see the bank is $9,000 and a starting capital for each player. Our four player game gives each player $450 from the bank. Give each player their starting capital and place the remaining bank near the designated banker. 1822 does not come with paper money, so here I use poker chips. It's one method to speed up play. Place the sorted track tiles near the board. At the start of the game, only the yellow tiles are used, but the other tiles should be available for inspection. I'm using jewelry display trays to allow the tiles to be passed around the table. This is the 1882 tile manifest. It shows the quantity and upgrades of various track tiles. Note, there are a significant number of single tiles and limited upgrades. Plan your track carefully to make sure the tile you need is available. The company markers and charters nearby. Place the round marker on a space marked stock round. Determine seating randomly or by mutual agreement. Give the first player the priority deal marker. Now we're ready to start the initial auction. Okay, 1882. We played 18 Chesapeake. This has a lot of similarities to 18 Chesapeake and 1830. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is 60% to float your company, just like Chesapeake. It's a full cap, which means you're going to get all your money once the company floats. Okay, the board. We have some off board locations here. Uh, we have some yellow tiles pre -print printed. This blue line is different than in Chesapeake because this is the rivers. Okay, so when you make a connection, Seth, hand me two yellow tiles, please. Which ones? Doesn't matter. Okay, building up to the river doesn't cost you anything. Mm -hmm. If you make the connection across the river, you have to pay $40. Or the money depicted on the... Or whatever it is. In this case, it's 20 40 60 I guess it depends on how deep the river is mm -hmm. and how expensive it's going to be. You also have mountains, which is $40 to build in here. Uh, we have these NWR hexes, which I will talk about a little bit later in the teach. This blue area, that, that's new to you. This is revenue. If you connect to it, it basically can increase your run by that much. You don't have to count it as one of the cities. Hmm. So in other words, if I had a two train, I could go one, two, and get that. Okay? Uh, takes care of that. You, you're familiar with these little barbells, meaning that they are block Texas. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that when we talk about the privates. Uh, Hudson Bay. If you connect Hudson Bay to either Northern Alberta or Western Canada, it's going to be a hundred dollar bonus. Nice. Yes, very nice, but of course, very difficult to do. Other differences. During track lays. In 1830, 18 Chesapeake, you're allowed to lay one track per turn. Mm -hmm. In 1882, you can lay a second yellow track 
but it's going to cost you twenty dollars to do that okay okay mm -hmm. again not very complicated we have a bank of nine thousand dollars out of it i have taken we have three players so each one of us have six hundred dollars our sheer our certificate limit is 14 in this game which means you can have 14 pieces of paper in front of you okay okay so we'll put the oh the trains before the start of the game there is a set of extra trains down there i shuffle those up and de dealt one and you'll notice that underneath the six train is this nwr which is the northwestern territory revolt revolution when the first six train is bought, that becomes exposed, and we have a special event up here, which I will talk about. Okay? So that's an event that's going to happen. Additionally, this private company, I randomly took five different shares, shuffled them up, and it ended up with a cop with 10% share of the Canadian Pacific. Initial auction. The auction works very similarly to 18 Chesapeake or 1830. It is a waterfall auction in which the acting player may do one of three things. Buy the lowest value private at face value, place a bid on a higher priced private, or pass. There are five private companies to be auctioned. Let's look at what each one does. P1, the Hudson Bay Company, costs $20 provides $5 income each operating round. It has no special ability, though it does block building on hex C11 while it's owned by a player. P2, cost $50, $10 revenue per OR. It blocks hex H4 while it is owned by a player. During the owning player's stock round, it may be exchanged for the president's certificate of the SCR. This is the only way the SCR enters the game. When the SCR enters the game, it will add one additional train. P3, cost $80 and $15 revenue each operating round. The owner of this private may move a station. The move is from a non-MWR city to a city in the MWR. This move may occur anytime during the company's operation. It also allows for an extra tile lay or upgrade of the MWR city that the token is moved to. If the company's home token is moved, replace it with a neutral token. P4, the Trestle Bridge Company, cost $140. This company earns no money at the start of the OR. It instead earns $10 from a bank when each new connection across the river bedside is made. A tile lay or upgrade that completes multiple crossing earns $10 for each one. This company also comes with a 10% share in a random public company and blocks hex G9 while they owned by a player. P5, Canadian Pacific Company. This company comes with a 20% president's certificate of the CPR. The buying player must immediately set the par price for the CPR. This private cannot be purchased by a public company and closes at the start of phase five or when the CPR purchases a train. So we're going to start the game with a private auction. Private auctions... Hold, hold the same way as um, Chesapeake? Chesapeake is a cascading auction, which means that you can do one of three things on your turn. You can buy the cheapest mm -hmm. at its price. You can bid on one of the more expensive ones. The minimum bid is five dollars above the cost okay so in other words if you want to bid on the pacific company it's going to cost you 185 okay, so unless it's, 10. it's the only one left uh rip cord still works the same say again rip cords the rip cord oh the rip cord yes the rip cord so when this bot when this go if anything has single bids on it mm -hmm. they all get sold until we get to one without a bid okay. or one with multiple bids and then those two players are the ones that are bidding mm -hmm. on that company the way we're going to mark our bids is you're sitting to the my right you're sitting to my left uh so when i put my bid i'll put it there that's the way we know it's my bid 
You can put it there, and you can put yours in the other corner. Okay. Okay? Now, first player, hand me the number cards. Up, oh, here we go. One, two, and three. Mm -hmm. This is going to determine the initial seating order for the auction. So it's going to it's going to change. So don't okay. get too comfortable. Let's see what we got. We got one, two, and I am player number one. Okay, two of you switch places. Okay, I'm gonna go get my ledger that I need. Okay, everyone's in their seat, and I get the beaver, first player marker. So, my choices are I can buy the Hudson. Well, before we start bidding, let me explain to you what each one of these does. Mm -hmm. The Hudson Bay Company has no special ability. However, as long as it is owned by a player, it prevents building in fin Flin Flon. Hex C11 there. It costs $20. And it'll give you five dollar revenue every turn. Okay. The NWR. Let me get this one up because the NWR is special. P two NWR. Okay, it blocks H four. No, it's that's P three. I'm sorry, they're out of order. There we go. P two. Yeah, P two is the Sasquatchian Central Company. Cost $50 to buy, revenue is $10 per turn. It blocks, uh, let's see, P2 blocks H4. So H4 is located right here. So that company is going to block here. Additionally, during your stock round, you may trade this in for the president share of the blue company. Mm -hmm. This is the only way the blue company comes into play. Huh. Okay, uh, let me see. There's exchange to the private company for the president certificate of the SCR. Discard the private company from the game. You set the par price mm -hmm. uh, and pays for one share at par price to the bank. So the private counts as one share and you'll get the president's share for the cost of one. So in other words, if you, on your stock round, mm -hmm. turn this in, set the par price for 100, you will have to pay 100 to get the president. This counts as one of the two shares, and then you're paying for the second mm. share. Okay? Uh, then places the home token on any available non-reserved city. So it can start in any hmm. city that is not previously designated. It may also replace what's called a neutral token. Hand me one of those white tokens. Now, we played with tokens where you know that the token mm -hmm. stops you from tracing through that city. Yeah. The neutral tokens allows you, everybody, to go through that city. Okay. So, the home station for this company can replace any white token. Huh. That's a pain in the butt. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, it adds an SCR token to the stock market underneath the exact same. Okay. Uh, it adds an extra train to the bank. This is where those extra trains come in. Mm -hmm. So we have Seth hand me those four extra trains. When you turn it in, you are going to take one of these, perform this step if uh, three, four, five. So depending on, you can only Camera do this jam. when the threes are available. What? Camera can't jam. That's fine. You can see right there they are. Okay. There's, it's going to be a three, four, five, or six. So this cannot be done before the threes are available. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically it adds this train, adds one more of the current available train to the stack. And then discard the rest of these that are set aside. So that's what that private does. Number P3, the NWR. Public company owning this company may move one of its existing markers, so you can move a move a, to a non NWR indicated city in any of these NWR spaces. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Okay, hand me uh, a red token. Let's say I am the president of the red company, mm -hmm. and I want to move. I'm going to 
public uh, may move one of its on markers mm -hmm. to one of the NWR cities. Mm. Okay, uh, including upgrading cities. There's no cost, yeah. but it may only be taken one time per game. No track connections required. This is addition to your normal operating term action and may be made any time during the operating turn. If the company home token is moved, uh, replace it with a neutral station marker. Hmm. Okay? Okay, put that back. That's the NWR. The additional... Uh, After performing the action, a single extra tile lay or upgrade may be performed on the designated hex. A company's home token cannot be moved if a neutral station already exists at the home. In other words, if I have an upgrade here, I have the home station and a neutral, I can't have two neutrals in the same city, so I can't move it. Okay, that takes care of this one. The trestle bridge. Well, obviously it comes with a 10% share of one of the companies, mm -hmm. and costs 140 it gives you no guaranteed income but every time somebody builds across a river you get ten dollars uh yep Seth, please stop clucking your chips during thank you yep so when the comp private is purchased during the auction you also get the 10 percent share the Canadian Pacific costs 180, revenue is $25, uh, immediately set to par price, and this private company cannot be purchased, so you can't buy this into your public company. Okay, okay? so that's like... Um, so once once you get this, this goes away. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, has this goes away when you buy a train for this company, mm -hmm. but it cannot be bought into the company. Yeah, it's like the B-O-N-O. -O. Right. Mm-hmm. So make sure these are in order. I am player one, and I am going to bid 55 on the Sasquatchin, Bigfoot Railroad. Is that 85? That's 85. Nope, that's only 75. No, there's 50 no, points. I can count. 85, 85 on the NWR. Multiply 6 by, or 6 times 67 for me. 402. 402. So I need to keep $402 if I want to start a company. One, two, three, 402. Mm -hmm. So we have 100. You bid 150 on. Wow, you bid 150 on that? 10, 20, 30, 40. You know, I'm gonna go cheapskate. No, no, I'm not. I'm gonna bid 85 on. You can't, I bid 85. Oh, okay, I'll bid 90 then. Now you don't have to, raising your bid there doesn't do you any good because right now we're both here. Yeah. So when this trigger gets pulled, mm -hmm. then we can outbid each other. But it is your bid. One second. Mm, take your time, do your math. Okay, so you bid 60. And we have the trigger. So we have 60 for the Sasquatchin, the Bigfoot Railroad. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll go, eh, we'll go 70. Go bid 80 on that. 
It's yours. Just put it in a bank with the right colors and we're good, buddy. This entire thing is the bank, right? Yep, that okay. whole thing is the bank. Okay. okay, now we're, oh, you get this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That was on that. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, we're bidding on this one here. I'm at 80.90. And I'm at 85. It helps if you put in the right number of zeros. What am I at? 85? 95. So we'll go straight 100. Okay. That goes in the bank. This is mine. Uh-huh. No. Okay, you get this for 150. Yep, out. Yep, take your time. Because there's no room in those. And you get that and that. Mm-hmm. And now, who... I whipped it, so... You ripped it, so it's my bid. Do you want it to pass? Uh, well, if we all pass, it gets dropped, I think, ten five dollars $5. Let me double check that. Uh, private auction. How much do we start with here? 600 600 yeah. So yeah, in the event that all players pass consecutively while one or more private companies remain on bot, the cheapest available well, company is reduced by $5. I'm, I'm, you need four or two minimum to start. The auction resumes with the next player in order. This I'm, may be repeated several times until it's at zero. Once it's at zero, you have to take it. So I am going to have not 70, 80, 95. I am going to pass. Give me a second. I'm doing math. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pass. I'll eat it. I'll take it. Okay. So 180 to you. Mm-hmm. All right. That concludes the auction. Now we reestablish uh, private company auction. Once private is complete, give the priority deal to the player to the left of the last player to purchase. Proceed to the stock round. Oh, we don't reorder. I hear the conductor. That means it's time to go. If you enjoyed the video, leave me a like and a comment. Until next time, have fun training.